So I have several friends of mine that have asked me several questions such as, I learned Java, what can I do with it? Should I go into Python? What can I do with Java? And today I'm here to answer your question. When you go into LinkedIn right now and try to search for jobs in Java, the results are mind-blowing. You'll be shocked about what you're seeing. The jobs are out there and the reason as to why the jobs are out there is because several people are running onto Python or any other language and leaving jobs for Java. When you look into government jobs and all those big corporations, they are using Java as their core language. Platforms such as Netflix and all the other, you know, big corporations, they're using Java. So Java is always everywhere and I don't think it's going to go away. And the recent version of Java 21 makes Java a lot better. It's a little bit like less verbose, okay? Um, so today, why don't I show you why you should still consider Java? Without further ado, let's get into the video and uh, talk about what we're gonna do today. So I'm just gonna jump into Google right now and search for Java software engineers, or maybe jobs, okay? So this is just Google itself and the results are astounding, okay? Those are some of the few jobs that are available right now for Java. Now, when you specifically open up LinkedIn, I mean, uh, Indeed, and then LinkedIn, and then maybe let me open up uh, this as well. Okay, so, um, and you can see that this is pretty much the United States, okay? Um, over here, let me um, put on United States, okay? And then a research again. So you can see the results are really mind-blowing right now. 31,000, um, you know, Java jobs, okay? And uh, I mean, I understand that most of these could be too general, but then when you, um, uh, for example, let's, let's get into this job and then see the skills that are required, um, you know, just to narrow down um, what is being required. Over here, you can see that Java is still right there with the big boys, okay? Um, let's go to LinkedIn right now. The, the results are 15,000. But, you know, the results are crazy. Let's go into um, ZipRecruiter right now and check. The results are 41,000. So, guys, do not sleep on Java. Do not sleep on um, all the um, hard work you learned while in college um, because this, this, like, Java is still up there with the big boys. If, like, you know, I try to look at... Um, so maybe programming so these no, most people follow this but um I, I don't normally follow it because this depends on your region okay um okay i forgot programming languages so let's um i normally use uh, these um, website that I uh, where all Java where all programming languages are really um, surveyed and collected um, is it is it stack something is it, it should be one of those stack overflow um, I'm pretty sure you guys are screaming in the com in the comments and uh, you pretty know what I'm talking about, but um, when I uh, take a look at this, so you can see that Java is still up there, you know, Java is still up there and it's not going anywhere. So I think the website is stuck overflow um, programming, I guess. La 
languages. Uh, yes, I believe this should be the website. I guess so. Um, I mean, I'm. Let's see. Shouldn't really matter because I'm in incognito um, technology and. Let me maximize this a little bit. Um, work employment. For, um, let's take a look. It should be somewhere. I guess we are almost getting there. Learning to code. Um, so this, if you don't know, this this website is um, you know collects data from uh, pro, uh, developers out there that are willing to submit what they feel that that is comfortable with them and uh, based on uh, what is easy to learn and. Uh, what is uh, loved and um, so you, you so you need to gauge all those um, in terms of like um, you know what is easy to learn what is loved by most programmers um, you need to look at all those things but uh, for me personally I, I wouldn't consider what is easy to learn or what is hard to learn I would consider what career I want to get into and then from there, I would try to practice as much as I can to get into um, uh, that, you know, use that programming language to take advantage of that programming language and uh, become better. Uh, so you can, you can see this is a lot of, I'll, I'll link this um, um, website in the description below for you guys to reference yourself but you can see um that mass people developer type most developers were full stack or um you know they were full stack and most people were back end and people were front end um you know yeah so i'm trying to still i haven't found so most uh, countries with developers are from the united states i mean based on people that were submitting this data um, I still yet to most technologies, um, popular technologies. I think maybe if we go over there, maybe we, yeah, there we go. So, um, all respondents, this is in general that everybody, you know, it doesn't matter if you're a student or, you know, you're self told, this is all the data from everybody. Now, if you Take a look at um, this JavaScript, HTML, Python. I mean, this is not a programming language. Language um, Python, SQL, TypeScript. So you can see Java is all the way down there, right? But this is the general, like the average. So when you take a look at the a professional, um, you will see that JavaScript is used more. HTML, CSS. I don't know why this is there, but um, you know, SQL, Python, TypeScript, Java. Okay. Um, so you can see that you, you you do not really go wrong if you choose Java. I um, you know you know, not choosing Java, but if you learn Java from college and you want to go forward and pursue a career in Java. I see. I have a couple of friends that are into Rust. Um, then learning to code. This is based on um, uh, people that you know found languages easier to code. Obviously HTML, um, Python, and then Java is. Um, down there is a you know what's that uh fifth but then this should not um you know uh, these are databases most use databases postgres obviously because open source and mysql then sqlite um mongodb which is a uh, no sql and then microsoft sql server redis mariodb i'm looking for oracle so oracle is all the way down there um so there's a bunch of um uh, both NoSQL and relational databases that I used um, over here. So I'll add this. So if you, um, this should not be your um, stopgap or um, if you're not seeing your language, you can as well um, just type in Google or corporations okay if I can spell corporations um, that should be
So now this is also pulling data from um, someone. So everybody's collecting their data. So um, one thing, can, one thing I can let you know that um, Java, if you just because you see that everybody's running to uh, where was that? If everybody's going to JavaScript, okay, because it's easy to learn. That means they are leaving away bread on the table for Java, okay, and that's how you're going to sneak into the tech world and get a piece of the pie i can tell you it's gonna be if you learn java languages like java fast and c plus plus trust me all the other languages are gonna be very easy for you to learn personally um in the first place i learned um i tried to take a look at python but then in college i was forced to um learn java okay and then um from that very perspective my way of thinking when i was programming changed because when i came to um, python i could tell why um, i'm assigning something a string and why i'm assigning something um to be a boolean and all that you, you all you need to do is to come on this website um it can give you an idea not the general perspective if you know you took um, um statistics this is um a, a bit of the pie that is you know happening out there and uh, it can give you let's take a look at ai um some time back i was reading about an article whereby this um startup just released the rabbit ai uh, which is a small device and i think personally it's going to um change it's going to be a, a game changer for everybody you know it's um you know if you have like a grandma if you have you know your parents they can't use a few things around home so that uh rabbit ai is honestly going to be a big deal sorry i love i love ai and uh so this is rabbit ai um you can see that when you take a look at uh, i think this is my, their main website i guess uh, when i get there i have an idea yeah i guess yeah this is their well, main website i guess let's see hmm yeah, so they have a device and at the same time um i think this is like their research website but yeah this is the uh, the device that you know is going to be a game changer you can ask it a couple of questions and it can you know be your personal assistant and at this price this is really mind-blowing personally i feel like this is um more helpful than um a bunch of other couple um smart devices out there um but uh, to answer the other question that I was asked um, about uh, what can I do with AI with uh, Java. So uh, the first thing that when you're done with college and you you know been working on these um, um, applications that you know run in the terminal and maybe on some occasions you've worked on a Java FX application, um, uh, what I would want you to look into is to look into creating rest apis with spring boot and if you don't know how you know what spring boot is so spring boot is part of the spring framework and uh, pretty much what it does spring boot uh, just brings everything together that was in spring and uh, you know helps you build rest apis within the shortest time possible if you want to see how we can build a spring rest api application just comment down below and um, um, you know i'll create a video just to show you how you can use java to create a spring application like a full stack application um, you know both with you know server side of the html web you can embed html into java i mean you can embed java it's the other way around you can embed java into html and um obviously uh create a full stack application i've created several applications with a uh, spring boot and on other on other occasions you can use spring boot as only your back end it can create um you know your rest api connect to the database it makes everything super simple to me 
everything in Spring Boot feels simple than other frameworks that I've worked with. I've worked with Django as well, but I feel like Spring Boot makes everything straightforward. Maybe it's because um, I'm more familiar with the Java programming language rather than how um, Python implements um, its own um, um, variables and whatnot. But um, I've worked with both of them and trust me, for some reason, I love Spring Boot, okay? I have experience in developing full stack applications for years and trust me, Spring Boot makes it easy, easy. And I'm curious to know how, um, you know, in the 20, uh, if Java is on Java 21 and it's less verbose, I'm curious to know what modifications are gonna be done in Spring Boot because I feel like it's even gonna become way better. I see a bunch of people com um, comparing Kotlin and um, Spring and Java, but um, you know those two languages do different things, and you can use Kotlin. Of recent, I, I saw Kotlin can do um, multi platforms, so they are coming into the web, <laughs> the web uh, platform as well. But you can you can use Kotlin to, to create iOS applications, Android desktop and web on the fly so uh, that's still in the beta but um, eyes on Kotlin and what they're gonna do trust me I feel if you want to um, dive into web development Spring Boot as excuse me Spring Boot as a framework um, with Java as the programming language is the way to go if you're straight from college and you want to create something fancy something nice you um, you know definitely and, and you don't want to waste a lot of time learning new things, um, you know, learning a new framework. So Spring Boot is going to be straightforward. I'll link this um, URL in the description below, okay? And um, so you can, uh, um, if you're curious and you want to work on, um, let's say, um, you want to create your application in React for the front end or Angular, this helps you do that as well seamlessly, okay? So in the next video, and um, in the next video, what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a short video of how you can create a REST API in Spring Boot and you will definitely see how simple it is. And um, if you found this helpful, uh, please uh, let me know down below in the comments and um, uh, pretty sure I will uh, respond to all messages and um, answer all responses. There's a video I created some time back before I forget. It was about how to upload your full stack application to HostGator or any of those, um, uh, you know, in the CPAN or any of those um, hosting platforms. And um, several people were asking me how to embed the ENV file. So this, I'll show you how to do that in your Spring REST API embed, connect to the database. Um, add an env file so you can protect your pa passwords and user logins and then create a full rest api where you can send data add new data to the database delete data from the database and all that stuff that comes with the rest api then in the next video we shall create something very nice and if you don't want to miss something like that um just go and in the following video we shall update our spring application spring rest api you add user authentication and all those buzzwords that you've been hearing so if you don't want to miss any of that just go ahead and subscribe and um, tap the bell icon so that you do not miss any video that i release um, thank you guys so you've been for those that have been supporting the channel all the way from when we started Thank you and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye-bye.